This is a quick fix tutorial where I'm focusing only on difficult sections in the piece, applying only those principles that don't require sound imagination skills and will quickly ease your playing, making technique more comfortable and fluent. These basic principles are wrist movement, elbow movement, intonation, arm weight, articulations, phrasing and time. If you've been playing this piece for quite a while, keep in mind that all these principles won't work at full potential, as all sensations might interfere with new ones. Yet they will ease your playing as much as possible in your current situation. This is just a basic fix to let you feel more comfortable while playing, and since we're not imagining sounds, we're not making any harmonies, dynamics or voice and nuances in this tutorial. Match the wrist movement with the known direction. Move gently without any tension. At the last stage of practicing, this movement will be remained in muscle sensations only and won't be visible to the eyes. This will keep your wrist tension free. And a missing fingering in the score before starting playing. While the wrist movement is matching the known direction, the elbow is moving towards the new position on a circle note. This will release tension in hands and improve speed and accuracy in leaps. Our next etude is the last one in the first opus. And um, we're going to start with wrist movement that going to just go with melody pattern, right to left, and with elbow movement that I'm going to prepare our hand to the new position on the circle node, so our wrist is always led by our elbow. Now, I had this question um, in my comments about hey, why are you making this horizontal movement not about vertical and rotation? And it's really about the very first movements that we make in our muscles and they have to be very precise. And later, when we're gonna add some internal singing, intonation, phrasing, then this movement will gradually, in a natural, healthy way, transform into more something like this. But I don't make this movement from the beginning because sometimes this movement simply don't follow the melody pattern and create some unnecessary tension and eventually prevent from making good phrasing and playing technically free. So that's why I'm making first this movement and there's no harm to your hand. <laughs> and then eventually I'm gonna add intonation phrasing even even if we would imagine sound and sound texture. This is where the depth and the real breathing of hand will come into the game. So let's start with just simple movements.
the other health detention <laughs> will come from our imagination, from our singing later on. And um, we don't have to play expressive and technically brilliant by tensing our hand. How about that? <laughs> so we only tense fingertips, some hand muscles here when we really want to express when it's really just a manifestation of our musical idea in our mind. If we just tense because we try to play fast, then that doesn't make any good for us. And um, also, just take some time in the elbow movements. Don't try to play it in time and show yourself that you can play rhythmically correctly. Um, just again to feel completely comfortable, not feel any tension while making elbow movement. Sorry, today I'm very talkative, but I have so many ideas in my mind. I just want to say about elbow movements that um, why do we make them is because uh, that will allow our wrist to um, have a healthy angle while playing, so that will prevent from stiff and tense wrist fast. And also, for example, here, when we have this huge leap, especially if we need to play in a fast tempo, then preparing our elbow first in a new position and then with the whole arm is very helpful instead of moving the whole arm. And also that will um, improve accuracy in lips. Alright, I'm done, so let's play. <laughs> Sing in between notes with a glissando and resistance. Keep the same sensation while singing out loud only notes. While playing, keep singing the same way internally. It is possible to sing the same way while playing fast passages. Internally sing with the energy of weight. This is how it sounds without weight versus with weight. Such singing will sustain transferring of weight while playing, bringing more freedom and power to your voice and hands.
Again, when we're playing with intonation, we always play with transferring of weight and with articulations, because articulations, it's just a variant of how we sing internally. So over here, um, I would really not make this accent in my left hand, at least, maybe right hand is okay. I mean, in the, in the melody, but not in the passages. That's what I mean. Uh, because this accent could simply mean that second finger has to be more stable while playing here. And that's what he might wanted to show his students. Uh, so everything we're gonna play just in legatissimo, as it's written here. <laughs> Articulations are the variant of intonation, where the principle of singing internally in between notes with a glissando resistance remains the same. In every type of articulations, the first part of the interval is sung with resistance, but the second part is varied. In staccato, extremely accelerate the speed. <sighs> In tenuta, move fully down with weight. In accents, mix staccato and tenuta, bring speed and weight at the same time. Second of all, it increases accuracy in big leaps, for example, like here, here to here, or here to here. If you want to make it completely stable and chill while playing in fast tempos, uh, you need to simply know that this is six and you would just intonate the six. Even if it goes through some octave, it's still six. So, uh, and uh, what I wanted to, to add, the third thing is, but basically it's, it's the first thing. Okay, um, I'm confusing. So, first thing, it improve mm, musical speech, mm, increase expressiveness in our playing. Second thing, the lips. So the lips I just showed you. Now about expressiveness, over here, you see those hairpins here. I would simply intonate this ascending and descending, especially ascending seconds, these three, two intervals, with musical speech, and here too, and we know that the second is a interval of pain and asking and waiting and quite tense, so that automatically would make this little hair pin because it kind of would sound more expressive. So let's just try uh, and I show you what I mean. So this is without musical speech. Just nicely everything is on the same level. Now it's musical speech. to make it like 
like dynamically different, but you know what I mean. So these intervals become more prominent. Ability to feel a difference in singing different intervals will let us pre-feel through intonation the distance of every interval much more accurately. That helps mind and hands to faster prepare to the intervals. As I have said before many times, if we can't feel fast while playing, we're not ready to play fast. Feel the difference in sound while singing with intonation these intervals. And um, I decided um, to, to show you a little bit about of right hand, even though I kind of didn't plan it right now to make right hand, but okay. So I think that it's important for you to feel comfortable in this way. Right? So I just apply elbow, you know. So while your wrist would go a little bit to the left, your elbow should go to the right. And this is the, the secret of accurate leap, I guess. So gently, everything is gentle. Wrist left, elbow right. The same here. Wrist left, elbow right. And so when you play it with the donation, maybe you can make this Sparzano, this accent on the top, so you're going to do it with acceleration and weight. And then, okay. So, even in fast tempo, if you still manage to make it with relaxed kind of arm, then that's your accuracy in leaps here. Phrasing is a structured intonation, breathing, where smaller blocks with more prominent sections are united into larger blocks with more prominent sections. Use intonation and weight in phrasing to make energetic crescendo towards more prominent sections and blocks. While practicing phrasing, take a little break, a breath after every block, and slow down towards the main interval in a motif, the main motif in a phrase, and the main phrase in a sentence. So let's go to phrases. With phrases, one motive here is um, one this small slur through the bar line when interval comes to the first note in the bar. 
meaning the last interval in the motif is going to be always more prominent. This is where we go. The phrase, two bars, two motifs, and the sentence, four bars, two phrases, these big slivers. And again, meaning of phrasing, uh, to help your hands tense and relax, breathing, inhale, exhale, healthy, in a healthy way, while playing. Because when we back off at the beginning of every block, whether it's motif, phrases, and sentence, we always drop the energy. The energy is less intense. When we come to the main, more prominent sections, we increase the energy and kind of inhale more. And again, in the beginning of the block, we exhale more. And I said in my very first etude, exercising your hands really help muscles to exhale better because when muscles are not really trained, then inhalation, exhalation is very short. And eventually it would accumulate this tension while playing and the hands will get fatigued. But in, if muscles are very good trained, then this inhalation, exhalation is much bigger. And hence, you will always completely relax hands enough not to get fatigued while playing. That would be it, so let's jump into the motives. And I will stop a little bit. in the motive because uh, I told you that phrasing has to be stable. Phrasing is a structure, very clear structure, bar calculated structure and I explained in all my videos about phrasing why I'm calculating phrasing by the bars and not by the melody lines. Anyways, <clears throat> the point is even in this motive you would say okay my interval could be a D still coming to the last interval in this motif, not to break this chain of uh, even constant pattern of phrasing, but I would still make it with musical speech, that's why it sounds this way. Second motive is going to be more important in every phrase. I'm going to again stop a little bit after every phrase. I didn't move enough my elbow or I also 
also might apply musical speech here as a sixth up to ensure the accuracy in this interval. So let's just fix it a little bit. After you practice one part, always start a little bit before because it makes a whole bit difference. You can practice hours one part, but when you start a little bit before, even a couple of bars, it will be felt absolutely different. I think actually my elbow didn't move enough. I can feel it now. Alright, so we fix it. Now let's try again. musical speech to control better the time in this interval so um, just pay attention to this second down with musical speech and this here three and four Time and tempo mean more than just the speed of music, it's a part of the character of music. After choosing the pulsation, connect time to the musical image of the piece, and if the image of music is joyful, feel and describe the pulse not as just slow, but calm and peaceful, not just faster, but lively and exciting, not just fast, but energetic and bright. Feel time while playing always following a phrasing line to sustain the flow of playing. Okay, so now let's engage time. When I combine it together with the image, I feel it as a heavy if I, for example, would start with slow tempo. And so, this is how I play. musical speech as a fourth down. It makes my fifth finger prepare much stronger and faster. Music is better. Okay, now let's go a little bit faster. So again, it's full of pain but more excited. <laughs> It's 
very animated and very energetic in a way. <laughs> phrasing fast enough that probably you will still miss but I mean I said that many times before <laughs> you want to play fast you need to learn to feel the right things fast and um, that's about it guys so um, I will move on to my next attitude <laughs>